If you like alcohol, you'll enjoy this video because today we're going to cover the history of one of the world's largest rum distilleries, Bacardi. Bacardi's journey began back in Cuba during the early 19th century. Cuba was already a Spanish province back then, and so emigration from Spain was occurring all the time. That's just what Facundo Bacardi did in 1830, when he was just 16. He was originally from Sitges, a port city in northeastern Spain, but he was compelled to try his luck in Cuba due to the poor economic condition. He landed in Santiago de Cuba, the second largest city on the island, and found a job at a nearby distillery. It was operated by a man named John Nunes. Back then, the rum didn't have anything in common with what we enjoy today. It was made differently, and Cuba's citizens named it Aguardiente, which simply means fiery wine. It was produced by combining water with molasses, which is the byproduct of sugarcane processing. Aguardiente was so harsh that most Cubans used it as a medication, boiling it in towels to relieve pain and heal wounds as opposed to a beverage. Facundo spent several years in John's distillery making Aguardiente, but he dreamt of developing a more sophisticated product. His first step in fulfilling his vision came in 1843, when he married the daughter of a prosperous plantation owner, Emilia Moreau. Using his wife's capital, in 1862 Facundo eventually was able to buy John Nunes' distillery for $3,500, thereby giving birth to the Bacardi distillery. The distillery came with a colony of fruit bats, which are symbols of good fortune in Cuba, and would later come to symbolize the brand of Bacardi. Although unaware of the chemistry behind making alcohol, Facundo spent months mastering his production method. The final product was an incredibly high-quality rum. At first, customers would come to his distillery to fill up their jugs and barrels, but when Facundo realized just how much demand he had for his drink, he decided to sell it in bottles. The Bacardi rum, labeled with the famous fruit bat, traveled like wildfire and was distributed all over Cuba by 1868. Facundo was a modest man who had no aspirations for global domination. However, when he died in 1886, his son Emilio took over and had much greater goals. Emilio was a highly nationalistic man who, in reality, used the resources of Bacardi to assist Cuban revolutionaries in all three wars for liberation from Cuba. This caused him to be exiled twice to Morocco, but after Cuba became independent in 1902, Emilio returned and became Santiago's mayor, finally being elected to the Cuban Senate. He turned Bacardi during these years into one of Cuba's biggest companies, which now owned plantations and distilleries throughout the island. It was not until 1910 when Emilio established a brewery in Barcelona near the birthplace of his father that Bacardi would spread its wings globally. The obvious international target for Bacardi was the US. Although the company couldn't export drinks to the US at the time due to the 18th Amendment, there was little keeping Americans from going to Cuba to purchase it. In the first year after the 18th Amendment got repealed, Bacardi sold over 80,000 cases of alcohol in the US. The reasons for the popularity of Bacardi in the States were mainly down to two drinks, the Daiquiri and the Cuba Libre. These two cocktails were among the first to showcase the use of Bacardi in a mixer, and they continued to be incredibly popular to this day. But the late 1950s would be a traumatic time for Bacardi. Throughout 1959, the Batista dictatorship crumbled under the Fidel Castro and Che Guevara communist movement. Facundo's descendants were actually avid supporters of the revolution and had donated thousands of dollars to the cause. This made it all the more shocking when Castro's new government seized all of Bacardi's assets, which were valued at $76 million. The betrayal left the organization in turmoil, and it finally reincorporated a year later in the Bahamas, where it exists to this day. Following the lack of its Cuban holdings, Bacardi was propelled by U.S. demand to record heights. In 1964, Bacardi sold 1 million cases of liquor, and in 1968, he doubled the amount. It had replaced Smirnoff as the number one liquor brand in the U.S. by 1980, with total sales of around 8 million bottles. 
Bacardi started the 1990s with the widely popular Bacardi Breezer, which was launched in 1993. A couple of months later, Bacardi paid $1.4 billion to purchase Martini and Rossi. Bacardi also struck gold with Havana Club. Havana Club was founded in Cuba by the Aracabala family and competed with Bacardi until 1959, when Fidel Castro also seized all of their properties. Under the dictatorship of Castro, the Cuban government lucratively started selling Havana Club all over the world. They couldn't sell it in the States, of course, because of the Cuban embargo, which led Bacardi to buy the US rights to Havana Club from the now-exiled Aracabala family. Bacardi started selling Havana Club in the United States in 1996 and was promptly hit with a lawsuit from the Cuban government. The case remained at a stalemate until 2002, when Bacardi was vouched for by the European Union at the World Trade Organization. Bacardi eventually won the case in 2006, and they remain the one selling Havana Club in the US to this day, despite the Cuban government selling it everywhere else. Bacardi continues to dominate, and today it is one of the world's biggest distilleries and one of the only remaining private ones. The company is now run by Facundo's descendants and have expanded the portfolios of the business to more than 200 separate brands. Thanks for listening. Please check out the links in the description. You can watch our previous videos in the Business Explored playlist. Please remember to subscribe if you enjoyed our content.